Well, good morning, everybody. You may be wondering why I showed that video. I'll try to explain myself. New clothing for the worship team. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know. Oh, we'll just leave it at that. Okay. Some of you may be wondering why we just watched that music video. No, it was not an inspiration for clothing for the worship team. Uh, but there's a message in there that I think is applicable to us today. Uh, this Mother's Day. You had to listen to the lyrics. If you just ignored it, then you don't hear the message. But uh, today our message title is Heroes, Women Worthy of Honor. But So today our message is titled Heroes. How many of you uh, consider your mom like a hero, right? You're like, man, she's awesome, right? Uh, and that's the title of our message, Heroes, Women Worthy of Honor. And uh, I really don't know how else to say it, uh, but in today's message, we will be challenged with an opportunity for all of us to honor our mothers this Mother's Day. Every single one of us. I chose to use uh, this hero song to set up today off the top because each of us has a unique challenge. Each of us do. Some of us will be up to the challenge and others here may be overwhelmed by the challenge before us today. You see, God is calling us to live a life that those around us can look up to. Let me say it again. God is calling us to live a life that those around us can look up to. You see, God is calling us to be obedient with the ordinary things, just the basic things of life. That's what God is calling us to be obedient to, to love our spouse if we have one, to love our kids if we have them. And I'm challenging us today to be trustworthy, full of integrity, and honoring to our moms today, this Mother's Day. Guess what? Everyone's got a mother, even if you don't know her. Everyone's got a mother. Even if you don't like your mom, it's, hey, too bad. You got one. All right? It's just the way it is. How many of you were ever let down by someone you respected growing up? Has anyone ever experienced that? Um, uh, maybe even someone that you considered a hero in your life. It could be anything. You could be let down uh, with anything from something really minor to something major. You know, as I grew up, I really struggled with this concept uh, as I kind of went through the years of life of people kind of letting me down. I felt like there was a variety of people that let me down. There's a line in the song that we just heard, and it says this, and it really resonates with me. It's part of the reason why I shared it today. And the lyric says this, I miss my Bible study leader, had all the answers for living in the big bad world. Don't know if he still talks to Jesus, but his wife's remarried now, and I think he sells garage doors. So the only part that I, that whole lyric is correct for me, except for the garage doors part. I don't know about that. But sometimes our heroes let us down. They let us down. Even recently, I've had people in my life that I feel like have turned into something that they once wouldn't have conceived possible. Just even in subtle ways. And even years ago, I thought that they would never turn into what they've become. So when I think of mothers today, I think about how mothers can be a mother uh, without giving birth to a child. That we call a mother because they give birth to a child, yes. But you can be a mother to someone or a mother in someone's life, even though that isn't your uh, birth child. Many of us have what we call spiritual mothers. People in our lives to, who still guide us through life and take the role of a spiritual mom. I hope you can relate to that concept. I'm thinking of someone specifically today in my own life that's not my mom, but it's my spiritual mom. So let's have a little bit of fun today. Can we have a little bit of fun on Mother's Day? Yeah, all right, okay. So why did God create children? Why God created children? After creating heaven and earth, God created Adam and Eve. And the first thing he said was this, don't. Don't what, Adam replied. Don't eat the forbidden fruit, God said. Forbidden fruit? We have forbidden fruit? Hey Eve, we have forbidden fruit. <laughs> no way, she said, yes way. Do not eat the fruit, said God. Why? Because I'm your father and I said so, God replied, wondering why he hadn't stopped creation after making the elephants. A few minutes later, God saw his children having an apple break and he was ticked. Didn't I tell you not to eat the fruit? God asked. Uh-huh, Adam replied. 
Then when did you, said the father. I don't know, said Eve. She started it, Adam said. Did not, did too, did not. <laughs> so on and so forth. Having had it with the two of them, God's punishment was that Adam and Eve should have their own children. <laughs> Thus, the pattern was set and is, has never changed. In Deuteronomy 5, verse 16, we read, Honor your father and your mother, as the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live long, and that you may go well, and that, that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. So here's our first thought today. Why honor your mother? Why honor your mother? Well, honor your mother because she is worthy of respect. Think of the sacrifice that our moms have made. Just think of pregnancy. Man, no debate. We need to honor our moms. It's hard enough to carry our own stomachs around, let alone this people living in them. Childbirth, say no more. Middle of the night, breastfeeding. Man, painful. Years of selfless, thankless toil. Come on, we can honor our moms. A well-known author and preacher said that when his wife was at home full-time with their children and someone would ask her, and they would say, what, and what is it that you do, my dear? She would respond, I am socializing two homo sapiens into the dominant values of the Judeo-Christian tradition in order that they might be instruments for the transformation of the social order into the kind of eschat eschatological utopia that God willed from the beginning of creation. Then the mother would ask the other person, and what do you do? That's pretty good. I'm not a mom, but that's pretty good. So let me look at our next one here. Why, why honor your mother? Our next one, character. Mothers have character. In Proverbs 31, verse 25 to 31, we read this. This will be familiar to many. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. The Lord God says your mother is worthy of honor. That's the Lord tells us. In case we need a reminding, your mother is worthy of honor. The fifth commandment does not say, honor your mother if she is a super mom. Honor your mother if she always exhibits gentle warmth. Honor your mother if she totally understands what you are experiencing. That's not what the fifth commandment in the scripture says. God's command has no conditions. He simply tells us, honor your mother, period. Even if your mother was lacking in many areas and your family was, is dysfunctional, she earned the title mom by giving birth to you. And that title demands respect for God so commands it. One of my favorite parts of being a youth pastor was telling teenagers to honor their parents because they'd get angry every time and they'd, and they'd walk away and say things about me. I loved it. It just, I don't know why it brought me joy. I don't know why. <laughs> but honor your mom. Even if your family's dysfunctional, I won't ask us to raise our hands. But even if we come from a dysfunctional space, dysfunctional family, we need to honor our mother. Honor your mother. Here's the second one. Honor your mother because you want to be blessed by God. Now, I think this is a bit selfish, but at the end of the day, it's true. Honor your mother because you want to be blessed by God. In Exodus 20, verse 12, we read this. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. The first four commands uh, that God gives us uh, in the Ten Commandments, the first four are related to our relationship with God. The last six commands relate to our relationship with other people. At the top of these social commands stands the command to honor your father and mother. Above all else, 
honor your father and mother. Remember the mother from earlier that we uh, shared the story of, she is socializing two homo sapiens. Maybe you've got six kids. You're socializing six homo sapiens. Maybe you've got 15. You're socializing 15 homo sapiens. I know we don't live in those days anymore. The leading indicator of the degree of socializing is one's attitude towards one's parents. So when I see a kid or a young person that's completely disrespectful to their parents, don't play the blame game, but I understand they haven't been raised in the ways that we would raise, or I would raise. And I'm at that point where my kids get a little disrespectful. And I feel like doing things that we're not allowed to talk about. (laughs) I don't do them, just so you know. What's our attitude toward our mom? In Ephesians 6, verse 1 to 3, we read, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth, on the earth. Paul quotes, this is Paul that wrote that. Paul quotes from the commandment as given in Deuteronomy 5, verse 16, which we've already read, honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Since it will go well for those who honor their parents, the opposite is also true. It will not go well for you if you do not honor your parents. The Bible makes this very clear. It's a hard truth for us today. Note the second curse right after the curse for false worship, as we see in the Old Testament, is the curse for dishonoring our parents. That's significant. Just after the curse for false worship of idols, the next curse is about dishonoring our parents. If you want to learn more about life under God's curse, you just read Deuteronomy chapter 28, 15 to verse 68. And it's got a vivid description for you and I today. The generations born during the past, I would say 70 years, have become masters of the blame game. For many people, when things go wrong, they immediately look for someone to blame. Often long-term psychological stresses are blamed on our parents. Some parents have made mistakes that have adversely affected their children. Some of you may have been abused by your parents. It may require much prayer and counseling to deal with the issues that arise. Yet we must not overlook the fact that many problems are a result of a curse caused by failure to obey God's commands. When all is well in your relationship to your mother, it is not difficult to honor her. The real test comes when there is disagreement and tension with your mother. It's a quote from Derek Prince, Blessing or Curse, the book. How to honor your mother. Guard what you say to and about her. Guard what you say to and about her. Guard how you speak to her. (laughs) How many of you got in trouble for being rude to your mom when you were growing up? I did. I can hear my dad still. You can't talk to her that way. And then it was just, okay. Anyways, and guess what? Who says it now? This guy. (sighs) How to honor your mother. God, uh, guard what you say to and about her. Guard how you speak to her. Guard how you speak about her. (laughs) Don't give labels about your mom. She's crazy. That's, uh, come on. No, maybe she is, but we're going to honor. We're going to honor Titles, she's an old woman. (laughs) Again, don't like, let's not go there. Blame. Isn't it easy to blame your mom? Especially when we were growing up, right? Blame, it was mom's fault. (laughs) Yeah, right. Is your mother's reputation safe in your hands? Hmm. That's a humbling question, isn't it? Even if your mom's not with you, she's passed maybe a long time ago. Is your mother's reputation safe in your hands? What a humbling question. Here's a warning to mothers. Children seldom misquote you. In fact, they usually repeat word for word what you shouldn't have said. Listen to her instruction. Here's what one mother taught her son. I hope you can get a laugh out of this, all right? Here's what one mother taught her son. The son said, my mother taught me to appreciate a job well done. 
His mom would say, if you're going to kill each other, do it outside, I just finished cleaning. <laughs> Son's mother, he said, he, she taught, taught me religion. She said, you better pray that will come out of the carpet. <laughs> my mother taught me wisdom. When you get to be my age, you'll understand. Yeah. My mother taught me logic because I said so. That's why she would say. My, my mother taught me more logic. If you fall over that swing and break your neck, you're not going to go into the store with me. <laughs> my mother taught me foresight. Make sure you wear clean underwear in case you are in an accident. My mother taught me about my roots. Shut that door behind you. Do you think you were born in a barn? Yeah, oh yeah. I heard that. The, yeah, the answer was <laughs> every day. Oh no. My mother taught me about the signs of osmosis. Shut your mouth and eat your supper. <laughs> I, I, I got in trouble with one of the kids because I said a bad word in church. That was pretty close, that one. All right. My <laughs> she tells me all the time. My mother taught me about contortionism. Will you look at the dirt on the back of your neck? My mother taught me about patience. You'll sit there until it, all that spinach is gone. I say that. Not about spinach, just about food in general. My mother taught me about weather. This room of yours looks as if a tornado went through it. My mother taught me about hypocrisy. If I told you once, I've told you a million times. Don't exaggerate. My mother taught me the circle of life. I brought you into this world and I can take you out. <laughs> My mother taught me about behavior modification. Stop acting like your father. <laughs> My mother taught me about envy. There are millions of less fortunate children in the world who don't have wonderful parents like you do. <laughs> My mother taught me about anticipation. Just wait until your father gets home. <laughs> Arlene's pulled that on Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or these days she threatens a FaceTime call. That usually does it. Oh, yeah. My mother taught me about receiving. You are going to get it when you get home. <laughs> My mother taught me about medical science. If you don't stop crossing your eyes, they're going to freeze that way. <laughs> My mother taught me... Uh, I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. My mother taught me, put your sweater on. Don't you think I know when you are cold? Yeah. My mother taught me humor. When the lawnmower cuts off your toes, don't come running to me. Yeah. These, are, these are old jokes. I don't know if they're politically correct anymore. My mother taught me how to become an adult. If you don't eat your vegetables, you'll never grow up. My mother taught me genetics. You're just like your father. <laughs> My mother taught me about justice. One day you'll have kids, and I hope they turn out just like you. In Proverbs 6, verse 20, we read, My son, keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them upon your heart forever. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you, uh, when you awake, they will speak to you. We here today need to remember a few things when it comes to our mothers and how we treat the mothers in our lives. Maybe, it's a, maybe the mother in our life these days, we're married. She's our spouse. Maybe it's a friend. Here's the first one about our moms. Accept her for who she is. What a concept. <laughs> Here's the next one. Forgive her for the mistakes she is made. I know that some moms don't want to admit this, but moms make mistakes. They're humans. Here's the next one. Surprise her with random acts of kindness. <laughs> what is honor? Here's, here's a definition for honor. What is honor? Respect and esteem shown to another. Mothers, let's be honest. While motherhood brings great joy, at times it can be downright frustrating. And here's something I think every mom that's alive today can do. do you can do this with your kids, your grandkids, great-grandkids, whatever you got. Strays that come on your yard. There are days when you feel like the mother who said, we child-proof our homes, but they are still getting in. <laughs> 
Here's some, adv- here's some more advice to mothers. Be patient. Grandchildren are God's reward for not killing your own kids. Be nice to your kids. They will choose your nursing home. If you have a lot of tension and you get a headache, do what it says on the aspirin bottle. Take two aspirin and keep away from children. I'm taking that one. That one's not just for moms. Now let me prophetically declare something over our moms here today. Moms, you are an influencer. Our world says influencers are people that go on Instagram and have a lot of people watch them. That's not an influencer. Moms, you are an influencer. Provide godly instruction in your family. Moms, you are gonna provide godly instruction with your families. Moms, you will live with integrity. You will live with integrity. And then finally, moms, protect through intercession, through prayer. Go to the Lord in prayer. When you don't know what else to do, go to the Lord in prayer. So here's our title. Heroes, women worthy of honor. So where do we go from here? Well, we all have a challenge today. You see, church, there are little eyes watching everything we do. Every one of us, there's little eyes watching. One of our kids, one of our uh, Northern Life Church kids, who you, you would maybe think doesn't pay much attention to what the adults say. He asked me a question a couple weeks ago. The kids were in our Easter services, and I made a reference in my Easter message about a Marvel movie. And out of the blue, one of our kids said to me later that day, why did you cry at the end of Avengers Endgame? You see, church, there are little eyes and little ears listening to us. Today, I know we all don't feel like heroes. Moms, I know today may be a challenging day for you for one reason or or another. Mother's Day isn't awesome for every mom. I get it. For different reasons, I understand. But for our whole Northern Life Church family, I want to challenge us today. Let's do our best to each day live a life that reflects the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That we would be slow to anger, abounding in love for the people around us. Generous as best we can and that everyone would know that we love Jesus and we hunger for time in his presence. Let's pray and then Hannah, you can throw up that last video there. Let's pray first, though. So, God, we just thank you for today. We thank you for moms. Lord, I pray a blessing on every single mother in this place. God, I pray is that we've had a bit of fun with what we've discussed today, but that the words of, the, of your scriptures would come alive to us today. And that we, we, we would be honoring of our moms. Lord, moms are heroes. There's no doubt about it. There are heroes. So God, I pray a blessing upon each mother here. I pray a blessing upon each woman here that's gathered in this place today. God, we honor them. We respect them. And God, we're so uh, privileged to have them in our lives. So God, would you be with us today as we uh, watch this final video clip and uh, come back to worship just one last time. In Jesus' name, amen.
So God, we're just so uh, grateful to be together today, this Mother's Day. What an amazing day to be in the house of the Lord together. I pray for, once again, for all the moms that you'd be uh, that you'd be upon them this week and, and the days to come. God, that you would grant them favor, patience, peace, kindness, joy, all these great things. And God, that uh, we would be, the rest of us would be a blessing to our moms and the mothers in our lives. And so God, we just pray a blessing upon each one of them today. And Lord, I uh, thank you for the reminder that you, uh, uh, Lord, today uh, we pray and we remember that the Lord blesses us and keeps us. That the Lord would make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord lift up his countenance, up, countenance upon us and give us peace today, we pray. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. amen. If you got kids downstairs, if you could go grab them, uh, feel free to hang around here as long as you want. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless.